Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Don't be surprised. Quit being like, well, I don't understand why this is happening to me. Well, why not you? It happens to everybody else. You're not that shocked when it happens to them. Every day, pray, Holy Spirit, fill me, baptize me afresh with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, with the Holy Spirit, there also comes gifts that we don't talk about nearly enough in the church. Supernatural endowments of power. I mean, you would have to be like, Not a very bright bulb in the package if you didn't want <laughs> all the supernatural endowments of power that you can get. Because the more power you have, the easier life becomes. And so, if you've never heard about these gifts, I have a whole teaching prepared that I'm going to do sometime this year on this. But the word of wisdom. Knowing what to do in a situation where you don't know what to do. Word of knowledge. So many people say, man, I can't believe you said what you said when you were preaching. That was, how did you know? <laughs> well, you know, the gifts of the Spirit can operate through you and you don't even really know it's happening. And he does it for the good and the profit of all. It's not just for you to show off and say, look what I can do, but it's to help people. God is all about helping people. <laughs> Discerning of spirits, knowing when somebody's off the wall. <laughs> Having that check about, mm, I don't think so. <laughs> no, nope, I'm gonna check you out a while first. <laughs> Amen? Some of you ladies that have gotten yourself in trouble with some guy, If you would have used a little more of that discerning, you know, you knew when you started it. You had that, but you're lonely, afraid you never have anybody, so I believe I can change him. No, you won't. <laughs> Trust me, you'd be better off to be alone than to be with somebody that makes you miserable all the time. And there's miracles and gifts of healings and the gift of faith and speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues and prophecy. And you might be thinking, don't tell me you're a tongue talker. <laughs> Mabel, we got to go. <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> be single-minded, but don't be closed-minded. Man, if there's something that God's got that you can have and you don't have it, then you need to say, God, I want to know about that. Get a good book and read. Look at what the Bible says about it. So often people want to teach us based on what they have and don't have, but just because Some friend of yours has never experienced some of these things. That doesn't mean that it's not biblical. And you need to go for everything that God wants to give you. Start praying about these things. See, I'm, I'm, your prayer life can be different starting in the morning. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Strengthen me today so I can behave myself no matter what's going on in the world. Use me in the gifts of the Spirit. Learn them, name them, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, gift of faith, tongues, prophecy, interpretation, healings, miracles. Use me, God, I want to see those things in my life. Is anybody out there tonight? So, how much of your prayers are for what you want <laughs> And how much of them are for what you really need? 
And I can tell you, we need spiritual strength much more than we need a bigger house or a date or that promotion at work. See, what God wants to give us for our inner life, that's where your real life is at. God respects persistence. And I'm gonna tell you something that you may not wanna hear, but I'm gonna tell you that you need to expect opposition. If you think that being a Christian is a walk in the park on a Sunday afternoon, <laughs> you have got another thing coming. Because the devil hates you. And anytime, especially if you are on the verge of making any kind of progress, If you start to read a book that's gonna help you, if you decide to go to church, if you decide to join a Bible study, if you decide to have a regular prayer time, you decide you're gonna help more people, you decide you're gonna give more. Every time you take a step in the right direction, the devil is gonna take a step and see if he can move you back. And so you have to be ready to fight the good fight of faith sometimes. I have three scriptures I want to put up and have you look at them. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. Because a wide door for effective service has opened unto me in Ephesus, a very promising opportunity, and with it there are many adversaries. You know, little things, like we're on our way here tonight, and our driver gets a call, there's a wreck on such and such, and traffic is just backed up unbelievably. And, and I'm, I'm just like, well, certainly. Of course. <laughs> they give you all these key cards for your hotel rooms and we get like four or five different people on our team have keys to different rooms and uh, none of them worked. <laughs> well, of course. Why don't you stop being shocked I mean, stop being, well, like, well, I don't understand why this is happening to me. You should just laugh and say, of course. But let me give you a little message, devil. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. Romans 12, 12 says, constantly rejoice in hope because of your confidence in Christ. Be steadfast and patient in distress. Stay devoted to prayer, continually seeking wisdom, guidance, and strength. Not continually seeking for your problem to go away. And like I said, yes, we're all gonna pray for God to deliver us from our problems. You know, we're too human not to do that. But that's not what you need to camp on top of. Really, the message in Second Chronicles where the Lord told Jehoshaphat, this battle's mine, not yours. I mean, if you go back and study that, when Jehoshaphat took his problem to God, he talked to God about a whole lot of things and then he just kind of mentioned his problem as a side note. Everything else was prayer and praise and how great God is and how we know you keep your promises. And, by, and oh, by the way, we've got 12 different groups of people trying to kill us. Could you help us with that? <laughs> Anybody there? <laughs> All right. And then one more, James 1, 12, blessed, happy, spiritually prosperous, favored by God. Man, the favor of God is something else. Woo. Favored is a man who is steadfast under trial and perseveres when tempted, for when he has passed the test and been approved, he will receive the victor's crown of life. Now, how many of you love having a good testimony? 
Well, have you ever noticed that the word testimony begins with the word test? <laughs> so when your deal is over, are you gonna have a testimony or are you just gonna have the monies? <laughs> yeah. Don't be surprised. Quit being like, well, I don't understand why this is happening to me. <laughs> well, why not you? It happens to everybody else. You're not that shocked when it happens to them. <laughs> All right, another parable about persistent prayer. Luke 18. Now, Jesus was telling the disciples a parable to make the point that at all times they ought to pray and not give up and lose heart. Saying, in a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God and had no respect for man. And there was a desperate widow in the city, and she kept coming to him and saying, give me justice and legal protection from my adversary. And for a time he would not, but later he said to himself, even though I don't fear God and respect man, because this widow continues to bother me. <laughs> I will give her justice and legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will be an intolerable annoyance <laughs> and she will wear me out. <laughs> and will not our just God defend and avenge his elect, his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night, Will he delay in providing justice on their behalf? I tell you, he will defend and avenge them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find this kind of persistent faith on the earth? So what does Jesus want when he comes back? He wants to find you standing strong, still being determined until you draw your last, that you're gonna have the best life that Jesus died to give you and that you're gonna be used by God to help other people. You can still be standing, I, you know, if you've been sick for 12 years, keep praying that God will heal you. Don't give up on God just because something is taking a long time. And I, I say that, God, I am not giving up. It's in your word, and I'm not giving up. I don't know why this is happening. If you want to tell me, I'd like to know, but you know, God usually doesn't tell us too much. <laughs> but I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. Come on, I don't want you to forget what I'm saying tonight. I want you to be stronger and last longer and stick with things. If it's in God's word, if anybody can have it, you can have it. Did you hear me? If anybody can have it, you can have it. Because you're no worse than all the rest of us. None of us deserve what we ask God to do for us. I think these parables are interesting. I mean, he's basically inviting us to bother him. Come on, see if you can annoy me. Just keep it up and keep it up and keep it up until I finally just give in. Think about Lot when he was in Sodom and God said he was gonna destroy the place because there were no righteous there. Well, Lot got bold and he said, well, if I can find five righteous. Well, I was thinking he started with 50. If I can find 50. God said, yeah, I'll do it for 50. Well, what if I can only find 10? Well, okay, I'll do it for 10. Well, God, one more time, can I approach you and say, what if I can only find five? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? He just kind of kept inching in a little closer, a little closer. He didn't want him to destroy the people there, and so he just kept narrowing the margin a little bit. I don't know what it is about God, but he likes that. <laughs> he likes it 
when we just refuse to give up. You know why? Because we're basically saying when we do that, I believe that your word is true. And I believe that you're good. And I don't believe you're holding out on me. I think the enemy is hindering me. And I know that prayer is powerful. You remember in the book of Daniel when he was fasting and praying for 21 days for an answer about something? And when the answer finally come, God said that from the moment he started praying, he sent an angel with the answer. But the prince, the demonic prince that ruled over that area had been withstanding that angel until finally God had to send the angel Michael to get the job done. See, God may send out somebody to help you and if the devil's able to resist them, you keep praying, he'll send out another batch, somebody stronger than the last one. For a time he would not answer her, but later he said to himself, even if I don't fear God or respect man, this woman's gonna keep bothering me until I give her what she wants. <laughs> you know, the construction and the wording and the meaning in this parable is very similar to the friend at midnight parable. The judge was unjust. The widow continued to bother him and be persistent until he gave her what she wanted. So that's kind of an interesting principle that Jesus is using that if you bother people long enough, they'll give in. And they're evil people. Well, I'm a good, just God, so what do you think you could get from me if you just stop giving up so easy? Come on. Are you seeing what I'm saying? The interesting thing about the friend at midnight mentioned in Luke 11 is he wasn't even asking anything for himself. He was being that persistent for somebody else. So I ask you again, how much do you pray for yourself compared to how much you pray for other people? How persistent are you about, I mean, I've seen things. I mean, I, I've dealt with people, a woman that I know very well was so sick. I mean, like, for three years, she just felt bad almost all the time. And pretty much every morning, I would pray. And now she's just like probably 80% better. You know, you just keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. You can tell a lot about a person's character by how they pray. Now in these two parables and the next one that I'm gonna talk to you about, about two men who went up into a temple to pray, we have opportunities to see ourselves. Let me ask a few questions. How quick are you to complain when your circumstances are uncomfortable? I'm smiling. <laughs> you know, if any one of us can get through one day without uttering one word of complaint, it would be a minor miracle. <laughs> I recently told my daughter, she, she think, my kids think I'm so funny, especially the older I get, the funnier they think I am. <laughs> and um, I, I think when you get older, you just feel like you have a license to take more liberties than you. <laughs> you know, you can get by with a lot when you get older. For one thing, you can act like you didn't know what you're doing. <laughs> I recently told my daughter, you know what? I have realized about myself, I really don't like being uncomfortable. <laughs> and she laughed, she said, well, all the rest of us know that. Are you just trying to figure, find that out? You know, complain if it's cold, complain if it's hot, complain if the seat's hard, you know. <laughs> and I've been at this 42 years. Hey, we, we all need to keep seeing ourselves. Amen? 
Do you get a little put out when God doesn't give you what you want? How do you respond when you have to watch God give someone else what you want and you aren't getting it and you're pretty sure they don't deserve it nearly as much as you do? Oh man, that's a flesh burner. <laughs> this next parable in Luke 18, beginning in verse nine, is definitely a parable for the me generation that we live in today. The parable of the persistent widow is given to teach the disciples to be bold and confident in their asking, but in this parable that we're gonna read, there's also a warning not to be arrogant or impudent. So there's a difference in being respectfully bold and persistent. I mean, I know it works. I mean, it works in the natural because I've had people that have asked me to come and speak at one of their events or whatever. And I've had to tell them no. And they asked me the next year and I've had to tell them no. And, and I, I've had people tell me, I'm gonna keep asking you until you come. So finally, I kind of figure, well, if I'm not, I might as well just do it then. <laughs> Get it over with. And it, I mean, it does, it does work, doesn't it? I mean, how many of you give in to your kids if they just keep it up, keep it up, and keep it up? It's just like, oh, just do it, you know, just, <laughs> you just get tired of hearing it. So when I say that you know, we want to be persistent in our prayers. I'm never talking about being arrogant or coming across sounding entitled. You basically say, God, I'm doing this because it's what you tell me in your word to do. And that's why I'm giving you these three parables. So you got scriptural backing to say, God, you tell me to be persistent and to keep on asking and to be bold. And so I'm doing what you've told me to do. Now, as far back as the 1970s, this generation was declared the culture of narcissism, which means self-absorption. Narcissism defined in the just, I got off an online dictionary, means excessive interest in yourself, extreme selfishness, with a grandiose view of your talent and a craving for admiration. <laughs> Our culture has moved away from being God-centered to being self-centered. The world says that our own personal happiness is more important than anything else. We hear phrases like, I owe it to myself to have the best. <laughs> There's no greater love than self-love. Humanists strip away the truth that we're formed in the image of God and they say that nothing is higher than the human being. New Age teaches that there is no God out there and the only God there is is the God in us. Well, as Christians, we know that Christ does live in us, but let me be clear, we are not God. Amen. Amen. I have to read these five verses of Scripture, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. They are some of the most depressing in the Bible, but we're living in the midst of this. But understand this, that in the last days, there will come dangerous times of great stress and trouble. Difficult days that are gonna be hard to bear. Can I tell you something? I have empathy for every person alive on the planet today because to be honest, raising kids in this generation is so much different. I mean, Ben, if you don't need the guidance of the Holy Spirit every day and to be full of the Holy Spirit, to have his wisdom and discerning of spirits, oh my gosh, you need to be discerning about what your kids are doing and what they're watching and where they're going and who they're hanging around with. And boy, do you ever need to not just preach to them, but be an example in front of them. Model the life you want them to live. Did you hear me? Consistently model the life that you want them to live. It's tough out there today. It's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to wanna quit 
and give up. But that's not what God wants us to do. You know, you can tell so much about a person's character by how they pray. We need to learn to pray for spiritual strength and wisdom and to have a Holy Spirit-filled personality rather than just asking for material things all the time. And we should make sure that we pray for others, not just ourselves. And unfortunately, in a lot of our communities around here in South Africa, in this region in KwaZulu-Natal, um, the abuse, the sexual abuse, uh, the physical abuse of, as well, uh, is quite horrendous. Even in the area, we were, we were scared for the kids. It's not breaking when they're missing. I'm not going to let that happen. That's why I'm fighting for this area. Some of the children in this area mm -hmm. have disappeared? Yes. They did. What we never found them. Before we opened up this crutch, they are safe, healthy, good. They are good. So these early childhood development centers are not uh, little nice to haves or nursery places where they keep kids, you know, have fun and play games. They do all of those things, but this is actually investing in long term benefit. This really is something that we can install into a community that opens up the door of the community for us to share the gospel and really stands as a witness, as a shining light into the community about the love of Christ. And we have such great opportunities through our Classrooms of Hope to help little guys like this who are going to make a big impact on the world one day. With your missions gift right now, you can provide safe, classroom learning opportunities for young children. You and your special gift today will change lives. Een vervuld leven komt niet uit de hemel vallen. Maar het is zeker mogelijk, zegt Joyce Meyer. En ze laat je graag zien hoe je dat kunt bereiken. Maak kennis met Joyce. Met haar levensverhaal, met haar tips voor het dagelijks leven, met haar boeken en alle andere impulsen die je kunnen leiden naar een vervuld leven. Bestel gratis de informatiebrochure en bel 026 20 22 100. Of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl slash brochure.